Well, hello everyone. Welcome to your daily five. I'm Joe Duarte from Joe Duarte in the money options.com author of option trading for dummies, fourth edition investing in your twenties and thirties. And if you like what you see today, please consider a subscription to my website, Joe Duarte in the money options.com. Today, I want to be discussing how to gauge the market's liquidity status via Euro dollar analysis. Now, Today's goal is to predict the future state of the market's liquidity, to improve the predictability of price turning points, and to provide a roadmap that can be used in any market at any time. Of course, reviewing our usual sound trading principles, we want to manage that risk, prepare for the unexpected, and trade what you see. And as we've all learned, uh, perhaps the hard way over the last few months, we never want to fight the Federal Reserve when they're raising interest rates. Um, you want to watch the market's response to the news and events, and of course, always build a shopping list, never let a winner turn into a loser, and please keep those sell stops on percent type markets because we always want to survive the fight another day. So why is liquidity important? Well, liquidity is the lifeblood of financial markets. It's essentially the amount of money in the system that's available for trading or doing business. And so periods of high liquidity are usually tied to bull markets and rising economies, and periods of low liquidity are usually tied to bear markets and poorly performing economies. So where does liquidity come from? Well, in this world, it comes from central banks. When they lower interest rates, they increase liquidity. When they raise interest rates, they decrease liquidity. Of course, when they have QE, uh, or QT, it, it, it does the same sort of thing with QE being uh, the infusion of money into the system and uh, QT being the uh, removal of money into the systems. And so it's, it's basically an expansion or an extension of uh, uh, raising or lowering interest rates. So when <coughs> central banks put money in the system, they put it into money center banks, which then make loans. Some of those loans go to big investors such as hedge funds and mutual funds. That increases market liquidity. And of course, there's the rest of us when we put our money into the markets. So the key point is that liquidity is money. Lots of liquidity equals lots of money going into the market. I want to look at the effect of liquidity on the market before we move on. Now, I want to focus especially on this chart here of the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Line. And as you're all aware of, if you've seen my previous videos, I like to apply uh, index concepts such as uh, an indicator such as moving average. Here's the 50-day moving average, 200-day moving average, 20-day moving average, and of course the Bollinger Bands, the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline. So focusing on December uh, uh, 2022 here, uh, or I'm sorry, December 2021, when the Federal Reserve started talking about tightening interest rates, what we saw was that the market became bearish. This is the CBOE volatility index, which measures the amount of puts in the system. Of course, lots of puts means it's bearish time. And uh, so we can see that the general trend in, in, the, in the CBOE uh, volatility index or VIX has been up. You can see that the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line has essentially been going down. And so the key point here is to remember that uh, even the hint of reduction of liquidity in the market leads to bearish uh, feelings among investors and decline in stocks. Now, I want to focus a little bit here on the RSI indicator, which tells us that currently the market is a little bit oversold. And so, you know, we might want to see what happens here. But the key point is low liquidity, people get bearish, market falls. Now, what is a euro dollar? All right. First, we want to make sure that people understand it's not related to the euro currency. What it is, is a dollar denominated deposit in any foreign bank. It doesn't have to be in Europe. Uh, it could be in Japan. It, and many of these uh, deposits are actually in the Caribbean. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, specialized uh, banks that, that do this kind of stuff. So what they are essentially are a source of emergency funds for big deals. In other words, when a, when a company wants wants to, to, to make a quick uh, transfer of cash to another company, uh, for whatever reason, it will use euro dollars because they're not regulated the same way that uh, dollar deposits are in the United States. 
So they're essentially short-term CDs, uh, certificates of deposit that are used to square books or make deals. And of course, there's a futures contract that's based on these deposits, uh, which is actually the most liquid or one of the most popular futures contracts uh, traded. But the bottom line is that, uh, as I will explain as we go along, and, and the point here is that euro dollars are essentially a measure of market liquidity. They, they do this uh, basically uh, directly because they are very sensitive to uh, central bank actions. Uh, and, and, and euro dollars react to changes in liquidity before other indicators. Therefore, because they are so sensitive and so early to respond, they are a reliable early indicator of financial system liquidity. And again, a rise in value in euro dollars equals good liquidity. A fall in value equals poor liquidity. And so the take home message is that euro dollars are a reliable measure of system liquidity. So what we wanna do is look at this and put it all together, okay? Now, euro dollars are the rate that they pay on these overnight CDs are based on the LIBOR rate, which is the London Inter Interbank Overnight Rate, okay? And, and really what's important here is that this is just, again, a measure of whether interest rates are rising or falling. And so we wanna look back here on this period of uh, late 2018, where uh, the Federal Reserve and other central banks began to raise interest rates or tighten market liquidity and LIBOR went up. That time, the Euro dollar index here, XED, started to fall. You can see that first, the uh, US 10 year note uh, rate uh, began to climb and that the advance in the stock market that was going on at the time began to slow, and eventually the market crashed. Now, what happened then was that the Federal Reserve again began to ease interest rates, and the XED uh, began to rise, and uh, the stock market began to rise. And so the take-home message again here is that when central banks um, Tighten liquidity, the euro dollar market is one of the first places that you're going to know uh, how tight liquidity is. When there's tight liquidity, stock markets fall. So moving on to 2020, we saw that uh, the Fed was easing all along. And then when COVID hit somewhere here in March, the Fed event essentially just printed money uh, like there's no tomorrow. And what happened was we had a huge bull market in stocks. And even though interest rates are essentially zero um, up here, the market kept going up. And again, December 2021, the Federal Reserve uh, said it was going to start uh, raising interest rates and actually began doing so uh, right around here. The euro dollar market essentially crashed and stocks have crashed along with it. 10 year uh, US Treasury bond yields have risen dramatically. LIBOR rate has risen dramatically. So where are we now? The RSI indicator is telling us that the euro dollar market, as we can see here, is starting to creep up a little bit. So it is possible that the market is oversold or has reached a point where the Federal Reserve may have to pause its tightening cycle. And certainly with the euro dollar market, is hoping for it, which is why we're seeing this bounce here. So bottom line, euro dollars measure the status of the market's liquidity, and they do so very early. When you see a rise in XED or the euro dollar index, it means that liquidity is rising. When you see a fall in XED, it means that liquidity is falling. High liquidity, higher stock prices. Low liquidity, lower stock prices. In other words, Liquidity is the most important influence on stock. That's all I have for today. I'm Joe Duarte from Joe Duarte in moneyoptions.com, author of the best-selling option trading for dummies now in its fourth edition. If you like what you saw here, please consider a subscription to my website, Joe Duarte in the moneyoptions.com. Remember, trading is uncertain. Always be prepared. We'll talk again. 
Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.